So let's do a little rundown of Intro to C. So most of you already know Intro to C is a really hard class at UCF, and it's the weed out class for IT computer science majors. And the hard thing about it is there's a lot of really hard programming assignments to do, which I'll tell you right now I'm not going to go through them as some of them are still being used for assignments and it would be unethical for me to show them. Uh, the tests are really the biggest part, so let's take a look. You start with pointers and segmentation faults, so don't worry too much about segmentation faults. That's just what goes wrong when your pointer doesn't work. And you go into uh, you know dynamic memory allocation. Not a big deal. Uh, dynamic memory allocation is something you should have learned in Intro to C, but it might be a little bit hazy for you. You use things like malloc or calloc in order to allocate memory, and that's uh, you know has something to do with pointers. Basically, you're going to use pointers with that quite a bit in this class. And at this point, you know, you probably haven't started your first program. No big deal. You're just going to learn about it a little bit. And you're going to go on to structs and struct pointers. So if you don't know about structs, they're a really big deal. You're going to be using those a lot in Intro to C2. Um, make sure you learn those really well. In fact, this, these three things here are things that you really need to have down and if you are going to study anything before you go into the class I recommend you study those three things pointers dynamic memory allocation and structs pointers and dynamic memory allocation kind of go together but structs uh, a little bit abstract but as you can see struct pointers are included in on that and struct pointers are the same thing as you know other integer variables that are pointers where you have a struct you make it a variable and that's your pointer and so you're going to go on to linear search and binary search. The thing about these is you probably heard of them, but you haven't done them. And you're not going to be required to do them by hand because doing them by hand is a little bit difficult. You might have to do that in a interview, but you just need to know how they work and the different steps it takes for them to accomplish their goal. And so after that, you're going to go on to order analysis. Order analysis is pretty interesting, and it's something you're going to want to jump on because order analysis is all about how long or how efficiently does a program run. How long will come later in the real-time analysis. But order of analysis is very important. It comes in things like O of n, O of n squared. If you're running a program that just goes through n variables, then you're going to get an n runtime, which is really good. But if you are doing a program that has n variables coming in and you make them conflict or work with each other you're going to get o of n squared because they all have to deal with each other and so on and so on you get n cubed and n factorial no one in that class should be writing an n factorial program from there you get to uh, basically recursion and so recursion is pretty difficult if you've never done it before it's basically you're taking a function and making it run itself in itself and that's kind of you know hard to picture because it doesn't really make any sense how can a function know what to do before it's already finished and it has itself in itself but just accept it and the fact is it's gonna have some type of variable that it receives to realize when it's supposed to finish it'll have what's called a base case in the base case what you do is you look for that variable to be something in which you stop because if you don't stop you're going to end up with what's called stack overflow there are no infinite loops in recursive functions because the stack will overflow and crash your program so the basic thing with recursion is it gets a bit complicated because you can send variables in other ways. You can call your function multiple times within that recursive function, which obviously gets complicated pretty quickly. And you just have to get the basic idea of it down and really work on it because you're going to be doing something called recurrence relations, which means you're going to mathematically analyze these different, you know, functions. And so one thing I forgot to mention uh, when you have order of analysis, you're going to have to deal with summations, and you're also going to have to do that with recurrence relations. Summations, it, you may be very familiar with them from other math classes, or you may not. If you are not, you should contact someone who is and study up on them, because you're probably not going to get enough in this class. And they are a different way of, you know, showing the, the run, order analysis, I guess I should say. And, and so the main problem is it's just a representation and so you just have to know how it works 
But when you get up to recurrence relations, they get to be a pretty integral part of the math. And as you can see, this is happening within a few weeks. So you don't have a lot of time to really jump on it. And so that's a big problem. Um, in this first test, it's one of the ones that I remember a lot of people dropped on. Um, it was above a 50% fail rate, just by a little. And I remember it was about half drop, half fail. And when I say fail rate, I mean drop or fail. And so I got an A in the class and I have never programmed before I went to UCF and started intro to C and I went from intro to C to here. And so anyway, you're gonna get into recurrence relations. Geometric sums are a part of the recurrence relation. It comes into play when that recursion gets a little bit more complicated. Luckily on the test, you'll probably be giving the program that does the recursion as well as the, the beginning of the relation. And I can tell you this, if you're not 100% confident going into that test, don't worry too much. I wasn't either about recurrence relations, that is. Uh, your bread and butter will be the order analysis because you should be able to get really good at that. As far as the other things, um, just know the summations really well because that's going to have to do with the order analysis. Know those just as well. Understand structs, understand pointers. You know, those are pretty important. If you get those down, the, the you know, recursive uh, recurrence relations are something that you can study after that and hopefully get down as much as you can. And good luck on the first test. Then you go into linked lists. Linked lists are probably, surprisingly, something you learned about in Intro to C. So linked lists are pretty interesting because they are not like arrays where you're just using a ton of pointers. I believe in Intro to C I called them pointer hell. But linked lists are really important because a lot of the data structures you're going to be learning about are going to build off linked lists. They're going to be linked lists that go more than one way at one time. So you're going to get into stacks and quays. This seems a little bit off topic, but it's not off topic. It's going to be something you're going to need to know. It's something you can actually implement in your programs at this point. Uh, you may have a use for them as at this point you may be starting on program two. And so you're going to go on to sorting. Sorting is a lot of fun. Sorting is something I personally enjoyed a lot, but it's not easy. There's going to be uh, probably over eight different sorts that you have to remember for yourself. And it's not that easy, but if you can make fun of it, there's things like bubble sort, merge sort. They all have their own way of, of doing things, and there's a lot of YouTube videos online that will show you it musically and spatially and with dancers. A lot of fun. They're not hard to get down, but they are hard to remember. Um, get those down, you're going to need them for the next test. Binary trees, binary search trees, you're also going to need these for the next test. They're not actually that hard. They're just linked lists that split off into two different directions at every node. And they're useful because if you keep them in the right order, they can be used to search things very well. And so beyond that, that's really all you're going to need. You're just going to have to realize that at BSC, you're going to have to know how it works really well, but it's not super complicated. So it's something you can do. The sorting, it's a lot to remember, but it's something you can do. Make sure you remember the run times of all the different sorting algorithms on top of how they work. And then stacks and queues, you might get a question two on those. Just make sure you know how they work. And linked lists, just you better know how they work by the time you do exam two. And so from then on, you're going to go through tries. Tries are like linked lists that split off into like 26 different directions every time a different node comes up. They can be very challenging. And I personally had a program where we had to write them and use them for several different things. Not a lot of fun. But it was just frustrating. <laughs> I don't want to say much for it. But uh, after that, you get to learn AVL trees. LV AVL trees are a bit complex, but they're really fun. They are basically binary search trees that shift things for, you know, correcting for the order they're in, which is really neat, but it might be a little bit hard to conceive. Heaps, heaps are easy. Don't worry too much about them. They're basically sort, sorting binary search trees. Not a big deal. You'll, you'll get that. Hash tables, not a thing you have to focus on too much, to be perfectly honest. It's something that takes in a bunch of values, you know, converts them to a set number of values and hashes them as it's called. Uh, not too hard to you know get. If you show up for class that day, you should be fine. Base conversion, all right. Now we're getting into you know 
This is something you're going to go over a lot at UCF if you haven't done it already. If you've taken computer architecture, you've probably already seen base conversion. You're talking about base 2, base 10, you know, base 16. Converting numbers to binary, to hexadecimal, to, you know, oct octaves. It's, it's not the hardest thing in the world. It sort of seems off topic when you do it, but it is going to be on the test, so it's probably pretty important you get it. Bitwise operators this where, is where it comes into play. Uh, in C, you can actually deal with things like binary, and that's called using bitwise operators, and there are programs in the future you're going to use at UCF that bitwise operators would really come in handy to know. So remember them, but as far as how much, they're, you know, they're not going to be able to test that much, to be perfectly honest. A lot of it's going to be AVL trees, a lot of it's going to be tries, heaps, and a little bit of hash tables, but expect something for bitwise operators, but not a real big deal. And then backtracking, that's fun, but still something we never really got through. It's a way the computer can remember what it did and not do the same thing again to solve a problem, but don't worry about it too much. You're not really going to get it by the end of this class. You're going to go into the final exam and there might be one question that's really vague and gives tons of partial credit. So let's look at these assignments. Uh, first one we had was called Smart Array. We were taking uh, we were basically making lists. It was a program that made lists, but it had to do it uh, without any arbitrary limitation, which is harder than it sounds. And it has to be able to store a bunch of names and do a bunch of different functions to them. Very difficult if you don't understand how to dynamically allocate memory, if you don't understand how struct pointers work, if you don't understand how pointers work, and just in general, if you don't understand how functions work, it is going to be a nightmare. Fibonacci is probably one you'll see. It is basically you are programming a program to calculate Fibonacci numbers, but there is a caveat to that. You basically have to make it to where, uh, how do I put this? The runtime has to be at a certain point. It really can't have any arbitrary limitations. So the hardest part about it is you have to create your own variable type. And you're creating an integer that can go way further than the integer limit. And here is the problem with that. You're going to have to teach it how to add those numbers. And that's not easy. It doesn't sound that hard, but it is. Have you ever taught a third grader how to add or a second grader? I guess they should know it by third grade. If you've ever tried to do that, well, just try to teach a computer. There are so many different things you have to consider. Carrying ones. And, and whatnot, it's really difficult. So that's the hardest part of that. If you can get through that, you'll be fine. We had something called reflections and kindred spirits. That has to do with binary search trees. A little bit hard to explain. It wasn't very hard for me. It took me about six hours. Uh, that's way low for the amount of time you're going to be spending on these assignments. The last one was called try prediction. I've already said I wasn't super fond of this. I got an A on the, on the assignment, but it was not fun. We had to deal with tries. We had to take uh, a corpus in, which is basically a page of a book. We had to, you know, basically have the computer memorize every word in it and draw a tree for each word and then the word that came after it within that tree, as well as having a tree for the second word on its own. It was very difficult, and I pray you don't get the same thing. But that's basically CS1 for you. It's not that bad if you put 110% into it. If you're planning on taking this with a hard schedule, I would recommend you don't. It's a lot of fun if you can find some friends and you like a challenge. And I wish you luck.